This is another critical day, another potentially explosive day, because both sides have once again called for demonstrations. In about three hours, uh, the opposition factions, critics of President Morsi, have called for marches to culminate at the palace. And about 15 minutes away from that location, you have supporters of President Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood. They've called for their own demonstration. I think a lot of people are relieved because they're not going to be at the same place. You'll recall last week, both these sides asked for demonstrations at the palace. Things got ugly. Nobody wants a repeat performance of that. The opposition is back because they say their requirements, their demands haven't been met. One of those demands is for the president to delay the nationwide referendum on the Constitution. We sat down with the president's chief of staff and he told us point blank, the nationwide vote will not be delayed. We also asked him about the possibility of violence on the day of the referendum. December 15th, the date of the referendum on the Constitution. You're convinced that it's going to happen? I am. And what do you think that day is going to look like? Do you think there's going to be protest, violence? I'm not excluding the possibility of uh, problems. If the people go en masse, massively to the vote, this will decrease the possibility of violence. Plus, it is decided that the army will join the police in supervising the, uh, the elections. That was Rifa Tatawi, the president's chief of staff, who mentioned that the army uh, is going to be out in the streets. Of course, the other day, the president gave the army the power to arrest citizens in an effort, according to the president, to protect the state institutions, to protect the citizens. Now, Monita, you have another added layer to this conflict, and that's the potential role of the military. When we look at the big picture here, Reza, some people will say, if we look at the protests that are taking place now uh, in Egypt, some people will say this is a good thing. It's part of the growth. It's a democratic process that people are allowed to demonstrate and, and vent their frustration if need be. There are those others, though, that will say, actually, what has really changed or what has really benefited the people of Egypt after uh, Mubarak fell? What, what are your sense of, what's your sense of what people are saying to you about that? Well, I, I think you're right, Monita, in that different people are processing and interpreting what's happening in Egypt today very differently. You're seeing some people say this is a glimpse of what the post-Arab uh, Spring uh, Middle East, Northern Africa looks like. You have the secularists, the, the moderates, the liberals fighting it out with the Islamists. And then there's others who say that the Muslim Brotherhood, the president, have simply replaced the dictatorship uh, that was Mr. Mubarak. But certainly what you have here is a fight for Egypt's uh, identity in both sides at this point, digging in, uh, not backing down. That's why we're going to have some intriguing and dramatic and uncertain days leading to this nationwide referendum on Saturday.